Welcome to episode four of the AVA Movement Podcast, a show about all things angels and airways to the stars and Tom DeLonge. My name is Adam Barnard, and today for this episode, I am joined once again by Stephen Christie, who has co-hosted the last three episodes with me, but I'm also joined by uh, newcomer Jay Corey Fox. So Jay, thank you so much for doing this. It's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Adam. Yeah, no, I was really excited. I've never done a podcast before, but, you know, I'd love to talk about anything AVA related. As uh, we all know, sometimes we share stories of we drive our friends nuts sometimes with it. So <laughs> good to have an outlet for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think absolutely. I feel like that's why this podcast exists, because it's like I want to talk about, you know, Angels and Aries for at least an hour a week, but my friends are kind of getting tired of it. So I think this is a great outlet to do that. It's definitely how the story goes. <laughs> So before we jump into the kiss and tell video and break that down, because there's definitely a lot to dissect and talk about there. uh, I just want to hear from you. You know, how did you become an Angels and Airways fan, Jay? Um, Can you just share when you got into the band and why the music really resonated with you? Yeah, so um, I remember like loving Blink-182. I think um, I was around like 12, so just getting into like junior high uh, when I loved the Untitled record. And then as we know, Blink broke up kind of shortly after that. And then, you know, uh, just I waited for (laughs) We Don't Need to Whisper to come out actually because I was just like such a huge fan of Tom. Like I was like into everything he did. Musically, I just started playing guitar around that age as well. So uh, I remember when The Adventure uh, was going to come out and it when it leaked actually and being on the Angels and Airwaves MySpace page. And so, yeah, I've I've actually been a fan of AVA for a really long time since 06 when they they started. Um, I was lucky enough to see them in 2010 on the love tour uh I was in high school back then yeah so uh and I still continue to follow to the stars and excited for uh the second leg winter tour and the new releases so you're like one of the OG fans then (laughs) I guess so I guess so (laughs) that's pretty cool so just a quick question. Uh, when did you get uh, when did you discover the AVA movement? Um, right now, I guess AVA movement is very much a social media collective where big presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, specifically the Facebook group, which is, I think, where a lot of the discourse is right now. But, you know, the AVA movement used to be an Internet forum for a while as well. At what point did you get really involved in fandom and find that, you know, start to discuss angels and areas and find that community online? Um, You know, not so much back then. I do remember it existing. I know it was really active during, um, I want to say, the mod life days around, you know, I Empire, Love Love Part One, that kind of thing. Um, So, yeah, uh, I... I was like really young, so I didn't go on the internet like too, too much. <laughs> um, so it really just sort of with this uh, revival and when um, To The Stars started doing stuff, sort of when it revamped on Facebook um, in the last few years around, you know, 2014, 2015. So just wanted to connect with people and everything like that. So, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, just uh, for one last question, how do you feel about the new music and the new era? Um, you know, the, the band very much became a studio band for many years. A lot of, I think, original fans kind of left or realized there wasn't much to discuss, but now that's all coming back. So as someone who has stuck with Tom and his music for so long, what do you feel about this revival? Uh, yeah, it's definitely big. You're seeing um, a lot of the same hype. Uh, like I say, sometimes I feel a lot of the activity, a lot of the excitement, even t- like when they weren't doing like, you know, a whole, whole lot being so much a studio band, people still talked about uh, how much they loved the love eras and I Empire, how those were sort of like those uh, big ones for them. Yeah. I'm noticing a lot of the same hype and, you know, musically and artistically as well, which I will dive into, I guess, when we talk more about the music video itself uh sort of just the same vibe like those big vibes uh like you have in a- the anxiety music video and stuff like that so yeah it's really exciting actually not that I didn't like the sort of project EP sort of thing that just went by I mean I'm a huge fan of chasing shadows and the EPs and stuff yeah. like that right Me too. Uh, but it looks like a lot of people sort of missed Uh, that what we thought of as the pillar that was Angels and Airwaves as a band. So excited to see it all come back. 
Yeah, that's a really good observation. Uh, I think just to add to that, the one thing I'm very surprised about, in a sense, is how much of the original uh, We Don't Need to Whisper an I Empire uh, message is in the new music. Obviously with different themes and sonics and stuff, but the, the whole inspirational take on the world thing, I think, is just through and through Tom DeLonge. That's why he says Angels and Arrows is really his heart and soul, because that's who he is now as an adult. So obviously he's grown musically and been through a lot. He's started an aerospace company and taken on the world in his own way and he's coming back to music and saying like I want to feel these things again I want to inspire people and for my friends who went to the live shows they say like it's very classic Tom and it's very inspirational you know he'll give a speech or something about just emotional resonance and syncing up with the people around you and taking on the world together and being whoever you want to be and I think that's just such a welcome return to form. I think it's quite interesting that they, they have went back to this this message because it's I didn't expect Tom to also get as personal as he has been as a as a late yeah i don't think he's been this personal really since blink the, the self-titled album maybe or maybe we don't need a whisper like do you uh, what do you mean by personal specifically i mean it's 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 quite direct isn't it it's, the songs have quite a direct meaning you know what they mean whereas maybe on we don't need to whisper i wouldn't say they were vague but they were quite you know, the, the the message wasn't as clear. It was definitely a take on the world sort of message with a, with a bit of a, a personality in the middle of it. But I feel like self-titled was quite angsty. And this new music's very angsty as well. It's got that um that thing that Tom's not had for for a long time. So that's quite kind of surprises me a little bit that this new music takes on the old message as well as the sort of the old Blink message as well. It's kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. So on that note, let's go ahead and talk about the Kiss and Tell music video. So that was a fun little audio clip from the Kiss and Tell music video. I just want to throw it over to you guys. Uh, what did you think of the video? I always love to ask people just their initial reactions, you know, before they get into intellectually dissecting it. How did it just sit with you emotionally? emotionally? What was its uh, first impression on you? Um, I It was like definitely a storytelling thing for me. Um, and it definitely reminded me first of a lot of like sort of the blink vibe how they would have things in music videos and sort of what we were just saying a little bit of the the teen angstiness sort of there which i thought was interesting for angels and airwaves actually yeah yeah it's uh so much better than what rebel girl was uh, <laughs> rebel girl was quite a you know, it wasn't bad um, by any means, but it was it was definitely uh, an introduction to to the new vibe, and this is definitely more rounded. Uh, got a bit of a purpose to it this time around. Like Jay was saying, the angst, the self titled angst, is back. I'm very happy with it. Did you kind of over time have you like not resonate with a Rebel Girl video as much? Because I remember at the start, I think we all kind of liked it, but is it something that just you know for whatever reason hasn't stuck with you? Yeah, yeah. T I mean, to be honest with you, it, I've kind of forgotten about the Rebel Girl video. Uh, <laughs> not like I say, not in a bad way. Um, this one's just so good in comparison. So you're just saying, like, you think that even like other people, and sort of just with this whole album as we've had it so far as a whole, that it's sort of overshadows the Rebel Girl music video at this point. I would say so. Like you were saying, it's just got that more, it's just got more of like a purpose to it, doesn't it? It's one of Tom's stories. I mean, if, kind of living under a rock if you don't know what it's about. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> it's kind of obvious. Uh, so it was just interesting to see him go back to that sort of thing. Because obviously with Rebel Girl, it was just a, it was a story narrative. It was going along with whatever the song was, whatever they thought the song was about. 
And um, this one is a bit more clear. It's a bit more of a, you know, this is this is the actual narrative of, like, you know, Tom's the star in it, for once. It's not an actor. Yeah, like, that's the crazy thing that I haven't seen talked about a lot, which is that Tom rarely acts in his music videos. I mean, you guys feel, feel free to ch- fact check me on this, but I think the last time he did that was, like, in the Always music video in terms of like being a performer in in the in the narrative section the acting part of the video usually he's just uh the front man for the band footage and you know he's prominent in the video but he's not an actor he's not part of a a separate narrative and i think that's significant for a lot of reasons i think one it's an uh, indicator that this is a personal concept but two i actually think that he's trying to actively call back to always the, the video for always. It's very much, you know, him a little bit older, a little bit more mature, but still angsty and kind of uh, referencing the golden age of, you know, his artistic voice, which I think is the, you know, up till now, the self-titled album. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, I agree with that because just that triggered some thoughts in, in, in my own head there. Like, uh, Maybe this is something like an archetype type of story that he wants to stick to. You know, maybe it in itself is not even to be taken literally. It could just be something like, you know, this is sort of something that's always going to be reflected to some degree in my artwork or whatever. Because, I mean, I guess as artists, maybe they have those types of things, uh, whether it happens in a, in a more evolved way or a sort of... Uh, a different way or the story changes it's, it's it's actually really cool to see that i'm kind of fascinated by kiss and tell um the song as well as the video because on one hand tom has come so far musically i mean especially once he's partnered with uh, aaron and alan rubin the music is so diversified so dynamic so evolved no two albums or eps sound the same and so one would think that like oh you know he's just changed so he's not going to sing about the same themes or he's going to just be a different person with a different voice and in a way he is but like what is amazing about Rebel Girl and Kiss and Tell the songs is how much or just how perfect it is blending the old and the new it feels very familiar very classic and also like nothing we've ever seen so you know Dreamwalker and Of Nightmares might have been heavily slanted toward Elan's sensibilities and skill sets and then Chasing Shadows was very much Tom rediscovering himself uh, rediscovering his pop punk progressive you know space punk self and then this album or at least these songs so far are a direct marriage of those two yeah m- musically i think for sure like i, I was it was funny you just mentioned chasing shadows because i was just thinking about that in comparison to this because uh, keep in mind too like i feel like maybe it has to do with the fact that this is just angels and airwaves as like music like chasing shadows was an ep for the secret machines books dreamwalker and of nightmares was for the poet anderson book series right i mean he kept talking about this strange times soundtrack and everything like that which i mean think about it it could tie it could definitely tie into the themes of strange times like whether if even if you haven't read the books maybe you've seen his posts about how it's about kids and it's about a youthful vibe so that also could would be him slowly merging into the next project. But again, I still think like it's sort of like free reign almost going back to what was his roots musically and in the storytelling as opposed to writing for a specific novel, for example. Do you think there's a possibility these songs might be um, old strange time songs instead of maybe maybe there there is some new stuff to it but do you think it might be old demos or or what have you that they've carried over i mean how long ago were they demoing for this do you mean like way before they even did dreamwalker like the ideas that tom had back then or like a couple of years ago he said like i'm doing a strange times album he's like fast guitar you know back to my punk roots i think that's changed a bit but i know he was demoing as early or writing songs as early as like two two or three years ago yeah that, yeah, that is the kind of the, I think around the time frame I was thinking of, yeah, it's a possibility, it's a possibility these could be Strange Time songs that they've, maybe they thought Strange Time's not happening anymore, or they've maybe changed direction and this is the new, I don't know, who knows. So let's jump back to the Kiss and Tell video, and I want to pose a question to you two guys. What do you think is the artistic intent of this video, and 
is it is it very much Tom telling a personal story? Is it just a fun video with kind of a, a concept about a relationship that's done in jest and is done very hyper stylized and is done, you know, like I said, as a callback to always? Or is it a balance of two? Uh, is it a balance of the two? And, and where is that balance? Um, I don't think it's I don't think he's uh, he's made this story up. It just it's very convenient timing, isn't it? That this this music video came out with all the rumors and stuff. Um, not wanting to to really delve into any rumors, but it's interesting. It's it's like he's almost he's been sort of pushed to the back with all these rumors, and this is him like coming forward and just being like, you know what? No, this is my stance on it. That's it. This is my music video. This is the song. There you go. What do you think, Jay? Yeah. Yeah, I I think that I think it's a bit of both actually. I mean, obviously just by default um again with artists like incorporating, you know, personal stories, stories that are close to them whether it's from when he was a teenager or it's now or he feels like the story keeps happening. Uh I do agree with Stephen maybe it is him just saying like this is it, but maybe he's also saying it in the context of, you know, regardless of, you know, that angle of it with what's been being said and all of that about relationships or whatever uh is that like hey like I'm ready to do this like there's no stopping me right which is a good thing like again very much take on the world sort of attitude with it so I I definitely think it's a little bit of both and maybe this is even him realizing the irony of it the way that people realize the irony of uh, you know oh um, yeah. like the always music video and how it's like kind of the same thing but we're seeing it in ava uh when he's you know older or he's in a different point of development um artistically but like he's having fun with it too though which you can tell which is uh really i enjoy that <laughs> Yeah, and I'll go ahead and say this. I absolutely loved this video from the first time, and it's only grown on me since then, honestly. I mean, looking back to Rebel Girl, I definitely, I enjoyed it on the first time. I think I saw what it was trying to do, um, but it didn't quite click. Something was a little off, and, you know, I enjoyed it. I made my thoughts known on the podcast, and over time, it's kind of been, like Steven said, I've kind of just... It's kind of been pushed to the back of my memory, and it's not something I feel like revisiting a lot. But with this video, I mean, right off the bat, it punched me in the chest. I was like, this is amazing. And I think part of the strength is that it is so multi-layered, you know? It is kind of, uh, you know, on the surface, a superficial throwback to Blink and some of his early artistic projects, but it's also kind of its own thing and kind of a blend of styles, and it takes inspiration from some very modern aesthetics that Tom hasn't used before. It kind of feels a bit like something that 1975 would do. I said that before I saw the video. I'm saying that, you know, even more confidently after having seen the video about 10 times. And then, you know, the last part of it is I think it is very much Tom coming to terms with whatever his feelings are about the situation that's been going on behind closed doors that is none of our business, inherently none of our business, but, you know, because it's part of this video, it's it's worth uh, briefly referencing, and I think there's just so many interesting emotions in this video. It's so multi-layered. I mean, that's the word I keep coming back to. It's, it's um, funny and cute, but also, like, a little heartbreaking and sad and kind of satirical, and there's a bit of self-loathing in it, and I think that's what gives the art so much flavor, because it's not just one thing. It's not just a cute, stupid love story. It's not something that's angry and vengeful. It's just, like, him processing, I think, his emotions through a video and a song, and I think the song is about confronting the things that make you feel alive but also scare you, and so... It's such a good video to pair with a song. And unlike Rebel Girl, I think this video um, matches the song much more harmoniously. Whereas I think the dissonance was part of the point with Rebel Girl. This is like the song and the video for Kiss and Tell just sync together perfectly. Question for either one of you. Do you think that this music video purposely references always? Maybe to get fans from Blink who are not as impressed with nine over to angels and airwaves to show to show those guys hey i'm i i'm still doing this at least M maybe you're you're not happy with blink M maybe try angels and airwaves do you, do you think that's maybe there's a little bit of that in there uh, um i think that you know it could yeah i could see that like maybe is giving a little bit of a nod to those people sort of just like 
hey, like these are a few things that in Blink that, you know, like actually kind of was my idea or like, you know, this is sort of my story and whatever. Um, And, you know, it's funny you say that because that might actually hold some truth because uh, I've looked at a few comments on Instagram, whether it's on Blink's page or ABA's page or his page or whatever. And there actually is a few people saying, hey, like this is actually so much better and it's like not necessarily people who have been listening to angels for like ever maybe like probably aware that they existed and that it was tom's project or whatever but actually saying that that they like it so much more so even musically i think maybe he is maybe not like trying to whether he is or not but it's definitely attracting i think even like a little bit of a maybe a younger crowd if i can say that <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's an interesting analysis. I think personally, I don't think that's the case. And the reason I feel that way is because Tom at heart is not super competitive or petty or kind of like trying to win over fans inherently. I really just believe he's a guy who does whatever the fuck he wants to because he feels like doing that now you know so if it is a subconscious thing where it's like hey you know i am still blink and like i had a vision for the band and so i'm just gonna make that vision because i think he said just up front some of the music on this new album is very much kind of what he had in mind for blink to go the direction of but i think instead of that being a well i'm actually blink instead of that being a a kind of point of arrogance or trying to compete over the same market i think he's just like hey this is the music i want to make if people embrace it or not that's their prerogative. And I think that's kind of why it's so good is because it's not trying to pander or win over people. It's just Tom being completely authentic in the moment. Oh yeah. I don't think he's trying to be like competitive with it. I just think that it like maybe like by default, like naturally some of the fan base actually might be, you know, more interested, which is actually pretty cool. (laughs) So before we wrap up the kiss and tell part of the video, I really want to dive into the production itself. Um, this music video is very, very interesting to me because, again, it's like familiar and completely foreign and clearly from a filmmaker who hasn't worked with Angels and Airwaves before. I mean, I loved Will Eubank. I love Mark Eaton. They're both talented directors, but it seems they've moved on to other things. I mean, Will Eubank has a movie coming out in theaters in January that's going to be distributed by Disney, you know, formerly Fox. It was formerly a 20th Century Fox movie, but it's getting a full theatrical release. And Mark Eaton has his own stuff. And Tom is someone who I think really likes to have go-to collaborators, kind of like Elon or Aaron or, you know, formerly Mark Eaton or Will Eubank. So he needs a new, he needed a new uh, filmmaker to work with. And I think he chose Matt Thompson because Matt is has done season one of Unidentified. He's doing season two and he's directed both of the music videos. So I kind of want to just talk a bit about the visual style, like what changes do you see and what kind of uh, influences do you see in the cinematography and the filmmaking of this video? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm so glad that they went with someone different to direct this video. The The change of vibe is so refreshing. Um, just compared to all the old videos, they, they definitely had a, a style and a visual. <laughs> and the visual was never, ever going away, which worked for such a long time. But had they come back after all these years and had the same visual and the same style... I don't think many people would be as interested. This feels fresh, and I'm very, very happy about that. There's actually, you know, for as much color they have in their old videos, they're all pretty much still, like, in the dark, but they're, the lights are, you know, the, the colors. But this one is, like, it's, it's colorful with the background. It's colorful with all, you know, their, their clothing and their guitars and... It's just, it's nice to see them change it up a little bit. Even if the music's not entirely changing all that much, it's still very much Angels and Airwaves, still very much Tom DeLong. But this is still a, this is a, a sort of a, a new a new vision for them. It's nice. It's like you said before, it reminds me a lot of 1975 actually, which will probably play in their favor because they're massive right now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I I think that's exactly it. You brought up a great point just about the lighting. Like so much of what Tom was trying to do was like cinematic and orchestral and a a fight between dark and light. And it was so dramatic, not in a bad way, but it was very dramatic. And this is a little more relaxed and confident. 
you know, I just love, like you said, just the different kinds of color palette and lighting styles they used just to simply give this a breath of fresh air and create a video that we haven't quite seen before. I want to just quickly take a second to talk about this in contrast to Rebel Girl because uh, Matt Thompson directed both of these uh, videos. I know Will Eubank shot the performance footage for Rebel Girl, but Matt Thompson shot everything else and then edited the video and he did the same, I believe, for Kiss and Tell. I just thought that like both videos do have their own identity but tell a story and, and and they're kind of like establishing a new aesthetic and a new vibe and a new energy I guess you can say but I felt like Kiss and Tell was just so much more precise like I feel like they made Rebel Girl and they made it they made a good music video and a video that functioned pretty well for what it needed to be but uh once they moved on to Kiss and Tell it felt like oh they learned all their lessons and they tightened up their filmmaking style and like the vision was harmonious I know Matt Thompson on Instagram said this video was really Tom's vision and he was just executing it but it doesn't look like that it doesn't feel like different people trying to put their own stamp on things or different people fighting over specifics it just feels like it it all synthesized properly and you know I really really do love anxiety and hallucinations and the surrender videos i think will eubank is just a brilliant filmmaker but yeah like you have to evolve as an artist it's like you just can't keep doing the same thing you were doing 10 or 15 years ago and expect people to show up with the same kind of fervor they did for something that's now a decade and a half old and i think this music video and and just the song and getting matt thompson in is is setting the stage for something incredible. And the best thing about it is it feels like they're just getting started. Like, I can't wait to see what video Matt Thompson directs next for Angels and Airwaves. That There's definitely the uh, the vibe of just getting started again. Like, I definitely can feel that just even when, like, before anything happened, like when Rebel Girl came out, um, even if it wasn't everybody's favorite song in comparison to Kiss and Tell or whatever, um, there was still that excitement. And yeah, like, in comparison to Rebel Girl, I feel like this one feels a lot more organic um, compared to that. Like, not saying that Rebel Girl felt, like, forced, but it feels... I don't know if it's just in contrast to the fact that he's actually in the kiss and tell video or whatever, but uh, it feels more like closer to like the artist making it than as opposed to here's sort of like a like film little thing, not saying that it, that like it wasn't done well and like the directors didn't do a good job. It's a good thing. Like just like on its own. Yeah, of course. Sure, um, yeah. yeah. But like, and then it sort of reminds me a bit more of what they were doing with like the Wolfpack music video, for example, and stuff like that. I think you sort of feel like even though the music videos weren't like these huge short films, like they were during, we don't need to whisper like the gift or things like that. Uh, you know, it's, sort of still feels more like okay it's like straight up a music video like they're still talking and there's still some parts that are not you know while the song is playing right but it's more just a straight up organic sort of raw kind of just like what Stephen was saying sort of at the beginning of our conversation yeah I guess a quick final question for you guys where does this video sit in your ranking in terms of AVA videos I mean for me I think Secret Crowds is still my favorite Angels and Airwaves video, I would probably place this second. That's how much I liked it, and I'm very confident in that after watching it as many times as I have. Uh, where does this video sit in your ranking for you guys? I think Anxiety's always been my favorite music video. Not necessarily my favorite song, but I just I love the... I don't know what it is about it. There's something about the lights and Anxiety and the look of the stage and how everything just looks so pristine. <laughs> There's something... It looks so clean. The stage looks so clean. Um, in terms of in terms of ranking, I think maybe anxiety, secret crowds, then maybe kiss and tell. Just because those two videos to me are quite iconic for Angels and Airwaves, anxiety shows off the sort of the the love era pretty perfectly. Um, secret crowds is a great video for showing off, you know, sort of like their their live, well, playing in front of a crowd, not necessarily live, but playing in front of a crowd and. The sort of get together message is quite nice, but this one would maybe sit at third just because it's so different. For sure, Jay. Uh, yeah. Like in terms of all the music videos they have, it's definitely up there. Um, and I'm sort of thinking more about, um, like, is it like does it vibe with the song? Like, do I feel that when I watch it? Like, do I think it's good at like for 
what context it's supposed to be in. Um, actually, I don't know if it would count as a music video, but one thing I really like is that um, call to arms piece. Do you guys <laughs> right, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Tom actually being in one of the music videos and acting, that is actually that one. So I don't. I know that's not like actually an official video, but I just I love that thing. Um, it's re- a lot of fun, and surprisingly, I really do like the gift um, short film and music video just because like it is really weird but it's weird in such a good way that I just I don't know I love it um could also just be uh, a fondness I have for that because again that was sort of when I first discovered AVA and I liked all of those songs like sort of those epic things because that's what was different about them to me as opposed to whatever else I was listening to at the time but uh so then there's that one and then I really like hallucinations just because I like the way that one was shot I don't know if you guys... That's a great video. Yeah, it's actually amazing. It's organic, but like artistic at the same time. Like it's like, they still sort of just like, okay, I'll walk down the street and I'll like, you know, lip sync to the song or whatever. Uh, if you w- ever watch the extras on the the Love DVD, the, the making of hallucinations, that's a cool thing to watch. But yeah, it's on YouTube as well, I think. Oh yeah. I mean, it? it's literally oh. just, it's literally just Will Eubank with a DSLR. I mean, not, not for the performance part, but for all the band shots and the landscape shots shots and the city shots and all the personal shots like it was just him with a camera you know sparking with his creativity and capturing what he felt like capturing with the band in the moment so I think it feels so organic and it's not you know the shots aren't perfectly lit it doesn't have this like sleek aesthetic but I think that's the charm of it exactly and then still all well put together very well in the end and then so I'd say that and then kiss and tell probably like so forth it's up there okay cool So for this episode of the show, we got a ton of voicemails uh, with fans sharing their thoughts about the Kiss and Tell music video. And normally we play it after our discussion, but in this case, we're going to roll all those voicemails at the end of the show. Um, So right now we're just going to take a short bit to discuss something uh, a little bit different than what we usually do, which is the two new regime EPs that are the two new new regime EPs, or (laughs) (laughs) there are two new EPs done by the new regime, which uh, were released this uh, uh, summer and this fall and because of Elon's significant involvement and contribution to Angels and Airwaves I just really thought it'd be a cool idea to sit down and talk about uh, his music which is I really enjoyed the uh, the EPs he's currently in the process of releasing four EPs called Heart, Mind, Body and Soul each will have four songs on it and then at the end when put together it will make a full length album um, so we have the first two pieces of that large ambitious project called Heart and Mind uh, both are great EPs um I just want to throw it over to you guys we all listened to this a few times before we did the show I've been a huge new regime fan for for a long time so I'm pretty familiar with his early discography and and musical evolution um what did you think of these two EPs and uh I guess quick note we should say Elon does everything this is Elon's band through and through Aaron does the producing and engineering and mixing but every instrument is done by Elon and performed by Elon and this is just 100% him so you know with, with that context in mind what did you guys think of these two releases um well i really liked actually a couple of songs off uh the mind ep like i like that first one it's gonna be okay like you definitely hear alon's piano and the guitar like you hear that um and again same with the intro of the first song on the heart ep i found Um, a way to feel again that like it's relevant so like I'd actually encourage like anybody who's into Dreamwalker and all of the stuff that that he's worked on with AVA to actually go listen to this because it will help you give more like an understanding of like musically where those um, influences are coming from certainly um well what I will say is I used to be a really big fan of the first two albums he put out um Exhibit A and Exhibit B, I kind of, I, I, I really liked them, but I dropped a little bit off of them. So it's quite interesting to hear where he's gone with, with this music. He's always evolving, isn't he? So what's quite interesting as well is I know that he's in a a Beatles cover, cover band. Really? With, oh, yeah, with, yeah. Joe told me yeah. about that. He's, he's in a, Be- a Beatles cover band, but it's with a couple members of Muse, um, a few other like really famous musicians as well. But so it's like it's, a super group essentially that's become a Beatles cover band. Yeah, it's it's quite an odd thing, but I think they've I think they've recorded an album now as well. 
but it's quite interesting to hear how much he's changed his his music style and it's also interesting to hear how much muse is like influenced that sort of thing i could hear a lot of muse uh the, the piano and the guitar it's sort of like a grand I keep, I keep saying vibe this episode, but you know what I mean. Hey, the vibe is on, man. Vibe away. Vibes. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's a grand vibe. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, Ilan's music has very much, with, with the new regime, been a synthesis of influences. I mean, sometimes you'll listen to a few songs off maybe Exhibit A, and you're like, okay, this is like Queens of the Stone Age, or these guitars sound a lot like Muse, or, you know, you listen to Exhibit B, and some of it's like Radiohead or some big you know, 70s, 80s, 90s influences, um, some of the chart toppers from there. I mean, even there's like occasionally some like Fleetwood back sounding stuff in there. But then as you listen more and more, then it's like, oh, there's Nine Inch Nails, there's this, there's even a bit of Angels and Airwaves. Like I almost feel like some of Tom DeLonge's songwriting has actually rubbed off on the lawn and the new uh, EPs have kind of showcased that. So to me, this is a, a welcome evolution to his sound and something that continues to display his diversity and incredible repertoire as a musician to be able to not just play everything on these albums but also be able to write songs that you know just not write the same five songs over again which i think a lot of bands struggle with even with good producers yeah you know i've skimmed through a few of the others the other stuff too of the new regime as well and it really and it's recorded amazingly but there's like it's the fact like the songwriting and musically he's so good that like i really feel like this is like meant for like live music you know what i mean like it's definitely something that you would just really want to hear live and like you know, like some like really cool bar with like an actual like a cool atmosphere or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. I try I try not to sound like, you know, like it in a bad way. No, it's in a good way. Right. And he is just such a talented musician as well. Yeah, I would definitely encourage any fans of Angels and Airwaves to really give this band a chance and give the music a chance. Um, I know uh, he has a lot of live performances on youtube on the youtube channel for the new regime but not live like recorded at a venue or someone with a camcorder like he got a professional film crew to come you know set up in a studio uh in this you know the isolation room of the studio and you just have three or four people and they're performing it live so the tracks are studio quality and performed live but you get to kind of almost like what they used to do with live dvds where a band would just perform an album or perform some select songs and then you have a professionally photographed um, live video to watch. I mean, he's done those. His his diverse his you know diversity and malleability as an artist is definitely showcased in that. And I mean, if you know, I'm sure there's a lot of Angels fans who haven't heard the new regime. I might recommend going back to Exhibit A. I think that was like his big breakout album. Um, you know, they actually recorded that in Tom's studio because he was working on Dreamwalker at the same time they made that. So I mean, all the if you watch the behind the scenes video, he's do tracking everything in Tom's studio. But that's like a good place to start. But then I would definitely definitely you know listen to what you ever what you want to on exhibit b and then come visit the new stuff because i think it's the band self-actualizing i mean when i first listened to a way to feel again which is the first single they put out and the first song on the heart ep i was like oh wow this is like you know it starts off and it's kind of groovy and then it kind of becomes like nine inch nails it has some of those textures but the vibe isn't nine inch nails it's like he's just taken what he's learned from all these bands and taken all these textures and put it into something that's uniquely him and i think it's just interesting to see him and tom self-actualize and really i think come into their own as musical artists uh with a kind of fusion that neither of them had displayed before in their own you know respective projects that they're the front man for yeah, I certainly actually I can see that. And you know what, when you really think you talk about them t- self-actualizing when you talk about that separately like as a genre, like it, it's almost kind of like a perfect like unexpected sort of partnership, I think musically that like you wouldn't like typically expect maybe somebody of that like who does stuff like along does 
uh, like as a genre come so close to you know the guy who used to be in a punk rock band or whatever <laughs> right like I mean his, some of his stuff is actually like you know pretty guitar groovy and of course he's in Nine Inch Nails but just talking about the new regime at least what I've listened to as opposed to like them as artists like because the new regime is so personal because it's all of him instead of him just like you know being in Nine Inch Nails yeah, and whatnot yeah. like that merging together him and Tom is just like when you really think about it it's kind of like a good unexpected thing that happened (laughs) yeah i think i think what's great is part of this these two eps um it's a component of something i expected like very much it's a continuation of the new regime signature sound but i think aaron and alan you know aaron uh, aaron rubin and alan rubin are such versatile artists that they really are trying to also brings some stuff that is completely surprising and new. And for me, that surprise was it's going to be okay. I mean, it's just this beautiful, beautiful song that sounds like it's come from the 80s that is so much more poppy than what he usually does, but also is like so distinctly a Rubin Brothers collaboration and something that has uh, so much texture put into the Sonics. And I mean, on its first listen, it delivered and it's probably like one of my top three favorite songs from them right now. Mm, yeah and you can tell they're sort of perfectionists as well with the with the production um yeah totally oh, yeah oh man there's a if, and even if you just sit and listen to it and because because you, you wouldn't notice it because nothing is out of place it's like it's all been meticulously put in place all of like the delays or all the reverbs they're all dialed in perfectly it's ridiculous it's so perfect yeah can't fault it at all yeah i mean as as a guy you know steven you're a guy who does production a lot is that that's something i bet you can respect especially and understand the tedious hours that probably went into crafting the sound and yeah you know i mean absolutely i do think as well though there is a there's a detriment effect to to being too perfect. If you sit there and dial in things to perfection, obviously this time around it's actually worked in their favor. Uh, I think because they've spent so long on not only perfecting the production but also the songwriting, so it works in their favor, and the the production almost uh, complements the the songwriting. Whereas sometimes you get people who don't write amazing songs i'm not talking about angels and neighbors or blink I'm, this is just a general term but some people who don't write amazing songs hire uh, perfectionist producers and the the production doesn't complement the song almost the song complements the production and that's when you know it's not quite working um there's probably a lot of songs you could think of that are in the charts right now the the production is amazing perfect the song's just a bit shit really (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i feel like elon is just i mean tom has said this he's literally able to just design all of his own synth tones and can make his own pedals and effects loops and stuff like just completely from scratch and they're freaking amazing and you know that's that's great but i feel like aaron as someone who's both very close to elon you know family relation but is you know just grown up being his manager or his producer can kind of know elon and and you know direct elon in the right direction but also add his own spin on it and i think part of what's interesting in these songs is while everything sounds very you know perf- uh honed to perfection some of the mixing and production choices are very very eclectic and kind of turn you know turn things on its head just when you think you're getting comfortable with the song and i think that's kind of interesting because it's like i don't always agree with the mixing or design or or the sonic choices but it's never once boring and it's never once just feels like they're going through the motions to get the song done so uh once the next two eps come out i'll look forward to sitting back down on the podcast and you know reviewing those and then looking at the project as a whole as four eps you know uh melted into one album i guess one long uh concept album but uh for now i would just this definitely has my recommendation I, i hope you guys enjoyed it as well yeah i did actually yeah, I, I'd say to most Angels and Areas fans, it's really worth checking out because uh, it's cool to see where a land comes from. It's cool to see where the Dreamwalker sort of started, really, if that makes sense. It didn't. It came out after the Dreamwalker, but yeah. you can tell where the vibes came from. Vibes! <laughs> <sighs> Word of the day. 
So on that note, let's go ahead and shift back to the kiss and tell video. Um, over the last few weeks, we've asked people to send in their thoughts and their reflections on the video and, you know, the song and just that whole project and what, what this video is about. And we got a lot of thoughts. And so I'm excited to go ahead and uh, roll the voicemails and then we'll do a quick recap afterward. What's going on, you guys? Name is John from Virginia and kiss and tell, man, it's uh it's the intergalactic boxcar racer reincarnation on steroids that I didn't necessarily think we asked for or needed, but it turns out we most definitely wanted it. Uh, it it's some of their best work, hands down. I, I cannot wait for the album, and this winter tour is going to kick ass. I will see the band in Norfolk. Have a good podcast, you guys. Hi, guys. My name is Matias from Chile. I am a big fan of Tom Works since Blink, and I buy his guitar and everything. About the Kiss and Tell video, it's a lot more than expected. I think Tom really nailed it with the idea of the video, the colors, the history, the relationship with the blonde girl, and of course the lights when the old band is there playing, like all Angels and Always video before. I think it's a pure Tom DeLong style. I really don't expect it, the final part when he screamed, WHAT THE FUCK? <laughs> I really love it. He, like I said, it's a really... Tom the Longest style. It's an amazing video. And thank you guys for this podcast. It's really good to hear all your thoughts about Angels and Airways. So, yep, bye from Chile. Hey guys, my name's Jace. I'm um, messaging from Australia. <coughs> Sydney, Australia to be exact. Sorry, I got a cough. It's, um, as you guys probably know, the fires down here are mental. Literally just fucking smoke everywhere. Um, on to the film clip though. First of all, it's really cool to see some new music. It's been a long wait, but it's uh, it's greatly appreciated to see some new music and to see some uh, a new film clip as well. I thought the film clip was really cool. Honestly, it was really cool to see um, Tom's comedic side come out that we all obviously love. Um, I also thought that it was really cool imagery, like um, like the duality um, between Tom and the. I'll just refer to her as the really hot chick. Um, Tom and the really hot chick, um, that mix of love and frustration between them. And then I thought it was really cool how um, it's just that one shot, how Tom's walking out and they start the show. And then at the end, the really hot chick disconnects. Um, yeah, just un unplugs everything, kind of just symbolized, just shut down. And then at the end, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's Tom dead. But no, I think it's um, just symbolism. He's defeated by her. Is that right? Am I reading in too much? Anyways, love you guys. You got a lot of fans in uh, Australia. Come back! Woo! Hey, I'm Cassidy. Uh, I live in Honolulu from Jersey, but I just want to give my thoughts on the Kiss and Tell video for the podcast, you know? I just love the video. I really, like, the color was so good. The use of color and the two distinct like perspectives. I feel like there was a lot of cool stuff with that artistically and visually. But like also it was a good song too. It was such a good, like it's such a bop. So like only the video had to match it. Duh. Anyway, um, I really liked it because it caught like the tension and like those kind of relationships where it's like, should I stay or should I go? Like, you know, like, keeping things on the low that's sort of you know the, the what happens before they finally release the tension like I felt it I felt it and I felt like it was done so well that it was like wow you know I feel seen you know it was so good and I think my favorite part was at the towards the end when they jump between um like the set like the the concert set and then like um you know the flashbacks and the tricolor like couch thing and it's just cuts between Tom and the main girl like laughing. Oh my God, that was my favorite. You know, the sort of the happy parts of all this, like, you know, you go through this whole like kiss and tell, like all the tension, blah, 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 but it's worth it because you get to laugh and love through it. And I think the way you guys caught that was so good and made me believe in love, you know? So yeah, thank you. And um, thanks for adding these perspectives wonderful day bye <laughs> hey guys so firstly i found the visual effects of the kiss and tell music video to be absolutely stunning i think back with the love music videos particularly in anxiety and hallucinations 
Tom really figured out how he wanted to perfect this aspect of the band, where now it's so much more crisp, very futuristic and spacey looking, and it just adds so much more of a vivid and vibrant experience to the music, and where you're getting hit with so many more senses than just your ears. Kiss and Tell in particular, the lighting that they used in that music video is almost identical to that which they used when I saw them in concert at the Paradise Rock Club in Boston, where every single song, the patterns and the colors they used in the lighting just emulated the tonality of the music so perfectly where it literally felt like it was flowing through your entire body. And it was just such a religious experience where like Tom was literally standing on stage and it felt like he was taking us on a trip through outer space through his mind with the music, which I'm sure he had some idea of going into it. And then as far as the themes go in the music video, you see Tom with this girl who they can't seem to make a connection or engage each other's interests. And I think he was alluding to his recent divorce with his lifelong partner, which I'm sure had a huge impact on the last two singles and will continue to on the music moving forward in 2020. I'm sure with everything that Tom's been up to between UFO research and novels and music and the tour, I'm sure that had a big impact leading up to the divorce where at the end of the music video, you literally see her pull the plug on him when he walks away to go play with the band. Hey, my name is Kai. I'm calling in from Vienna, Austria, and this is my take on Eva's new video for Kiss and Tell. So speaking of the new video, I have to say I'm kind of torn. I mean, I really like the performing parts of the members and it's definitely good to see Matt Rubano in it as well. I like the energy, the lights. It really feels like space rock Ava, if you know what I mean. Even the new guitar tech has a little cameo in it and he seems like a pretty funny guy. So I guess that's a plus. By the way, I wonder what happened with Tom's old guitar tech, Doug. I haven't seen him around for some time, so I wonder what he's up to. I don't know. When it comes to the other part of the video, where Tom and that girl act like they are annoying each other, I really don't know what to do with it. People say it reflects Tom's relationship with his soon-to-be ex-wife Jennifer. I mean, that could be the case, not sure. For me, this whole thing feels kind of awkward, although it adds some playful sexual tension for sure. Hey guys, uh, love the podcast, love Angels and Airwaves, without a doubt my favorite band. Uh... So the new Kiss and Tell music video, I think, is a little strange. It seems a little stripped down, just a bright colored room and Tom going through it with this beautiful woman. But I think the era of AVA doing the really, really spacey music videos like we got with The Adventure are over and that's okay because that really, really spacey era of their music is also over and that's also okay uh it's cool to see them do different stuff and i will say i really liked the part of the end where i saw my my favorite musician laying dead on the floor i don't know what it was about that that intrigued me definitely threw me off definitely gave the video some pulse um and i think it was a better plot twist than the rebel girl plot twist if you'd call it that it uh you don't really know what killed them it's more open for interpretation the rebel girl music video was kind of uh i don't know very different tone um love the podcast guys keep doing what you're doing so thank you to everyone who sent in voicemails for this uh, Kiss and Tell video discussion. It was great to hear a variety of opinions and also, you know, see kind of like a common theme come through in terms of analysis that it's a very personal video and it's an infusion of styles and a lot of a lot of really good observations and some stuff we didn't even pick up on. So which is part of the reason why I love listening to these voicemails so much. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed hearing perspectives that were like similar to some of the stuff that we talked about. But it's interesting that some people don't feel that it's this quite the same as that. It's not that full revival level like that I see it sure. or however. It's always interesting. But like we were talking, how maybe it's like it seems to be from our uh 
sort of perspective and from what other people say, uh, it's a little bit of both, right? Like you have definitely those core Tom things and you have those core AVA themes to make sort of this music video that suits the song really well. I, a lot of people said that too. Yeah, totally. And I think one of the beautiful things about Angels is the fandom is so diversified. And we always love getting calls from uh, international territories from around the world. I know I, I feel sorry for you guys because the band often doesn't tour in, in South America or Asia. I think they went on one Asia tour, like I think in like 2008, or they played some shows there. But um, I just want to say on, on our behalf as the podcast and fellow AVA fans, you know, thank you for calling in. And you know, I think Tom's message was always supposed to go around the globe and it was supposed to be a shared human experience that's what the band was always working towards so yeah again just super happy to get these voicemails and be sure if you see any notifications in the future for discussion topics we often don't know what the next show is going to be about because it's dependent on what the band does or what's happening that month um and you know in this case right now we have no idea what we're doing for episode five this will actually be our last show of the year we are coming back next year but uh this will be it for 2019 which is uh, a kind of uncomfortable to come to terms with because I'm <laughs> aging rapidly much faster than I planned on and yeah. it's just like where did time go yeah, yeah that's a whole to other topic for another day though isn't it <laughs> <laughs> different podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, thank you so much to everyone who tuned in for this episode of the AVA Movement Podcast. We hope you've had a spectacular year and yet you've enjoyed the new content coming from Angels and Airwaves. I know this has been a very special year for me, you know, for a lot of reasons, but one of the great surprises is to see my absolute favorite band make a comeback in the way that they are. And, you know, I think next year is going to be a very, very busy year for the band, so there will definitely be no shortage of things to talk about. Of course. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me as well. And thank you, Jay, for coming to uh, guest on the show and hang out with us to talk about Angels and Airwaves. We hope to have you back at some point. Oh, yeah. I had a lot of fun. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, go ahead, if you haven't yet, and check out some of the old episodes, the archive of the podcast, if you're just discovering the show now. We are on most podcasting platforms as the AVA Movement Podcast. We are on YouTube, iTunes. Um, we've also started a new interview series. I got to sit down with uh, Aaron Rubin, the band's producer, engineer, and mixer, and we talked for hour and a half got split into two parts uh just about his personal story and his history with the band and what kind of creativity he brings to the project and i'm also very happy to say we're in the process of booking more interviews uh not able to yet say who it is but uh that definitely will not be one of one there will be many more interviews next year but in the meantime we hope you have an incredible holiday season and a happy new year from the ava movement podcast yes have a nice christmas and new year take care everyone yeah thanks <laughs>